Welcome to my office. Uh, we're going to make a uh, <coughs> collapsible hula hoop. For years I've been avoiding making this. And now I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to figure out how to do this with you. I have an idea and I want to show it to you. I think this is a, a, an easier way to do it than other ways that I've seen. Either way, so there are some tools we're going to need, right? Uh, hose cutters. Uh, they cut like, you know, PVC material hoses with that. Scissors, maybe that's probably optional. These are like um, push pins. So they look like that. Yeah, push pins. And then we're going to have two different sizes to see what's going to happen with that. We have a riveting gun. This is a Jacobson chuck for my drill because we're going to drill some holes. We have some uh, rivets. I got these, uh, not a sponsor, arrow rivets. And uh, these are the same information about them. They're 530 seconds in uh, diameter. And you need them kind of long. So looks like this is it's uh, six millimeters or a quarter inch in length. And that's important because it's going to reach through material and squeeze it together and hold it together. We need some sandpaper, any sandpaper work. And assortment of drill bits because we need to drill some holes. So, this is uh, what typical hula hoop looks like when you make it. Underneath this is a connector that I slide into both of these. We're going to try to do this without using any connectors. We're just going to try to use extra PVC pipe and slide it into this. I'm not even sure this is actually a proper name, PVC pipe, but it's irrigation tubing. And I got this from uh, uh, any like uh, hardware store. Forgot to mention, uh, you might want a razor blade or take off pilot specialist tool. Uh, this I'm gonna disassemble so that way you can uh, just See the debauchery that usually happens when we make this. So this is an old school way of making a a hula hoop, you know. <laughs> so there's a connector. I gotta separate this. Now it's probably not gonna come across, come out easily because I heated it up with hot water to to tube in and I slid it in, and then it contracts so that. The thermal expansion and contraction is uh, really what I use to like clamp down. So let's get that separated. I'll probably just put my heat gun on it and then pull it out and then we'll continue. This is what you call a, um, uh, a coupling, and uh, this this is a these are called barbs. This is called a barbed coupling, and you can just get one of these and stick it inside of the uh, the tube that ever whatever you want to use, and then this will uh, connect the two together. Just by heating it up, you can use a heat gun or hot water on the hose and just jam this in, and it works. It's great. For uh, for just you know, if you just want to have a regular hoop, but I want to make one that's collapsible. All right, so the we have an extra piece of tube in here, right? This is from this is going this is from a longer piece of tubing that I have, and I need to stick this inside of this, right? And give a little overlap, and I don't really know what's the most optimal amount to cut off right but we need to cut something off so let's just pick a pick a pick picks pick something let's just go for uh, 
Maybe that much? It might be too much? Nah, not really. You can always, you can always cut off, but you can't put back. So we're gonna go a little bit more than what we think we need. All right. Now it's important to remember that um, there's a couple design design issues we have to think about. One is this cut the so this is my hula hoop right here. We need to just kind of see if that sits nice and flush. See, there's a little bit of a jankiness on this uh, on this. Uh, connector. It's not super flush. It's not the worst, but you know, the more flat you want, the better. You want, it to, you want it to pinch you or grab your hair as you go around, as it goes around. So you usually just spend a little bit of time with this, just kind of like, just kind of like cut it as flat as I can. So give that a try. this and slide it down inside of here right okay so this is what this is this is what I think is uh, important it's the most important part I think this is uh, a game changer for making uh, collapsible hoops yeah I don't want to I have to hold that I don't want to so let's kind of mark this so we can get a straight line here I did it with an orange marker before. Boy, that was so bright. Easy to see. So, do your best. Head along. Because I wanted it to, but this we kind of want this to uh, kind of collapse onto itself, you know, so we can slide it into the hula hoop itself. Um, now I didn't anticipate this too well, uh, so the there's only but so much I can push down to like curve this before I get to get it into there. It really worked on it a lot. And it's like really difficult to get any more out of that. So I'm gonna have to actually um, just shave a little bit off of that. All right, so I wanna just uh, kind of shave some of that off. And uh, we use this here. Can't cut too, too deep, but whatever. See what we can do. Might cut a little bit off the bottom one too at the same time. So, not intentionally, but. this uh, YouTube video the other day of this um, Arthur she's uh, identified medically as a psychopath <laughs> Man, her talking about her life choices why she does what she does how she feels and experiences empathy um, let me tell you, it's absolutely worth worth watching. I'm gonna read the book because uh, that topic intrigues me. 
for multiple reasons. I think I, <laughs> I can tell you, I, ident I identify with some of the things that she's done to people. You know, I was like, wow, it's, it's pretty messed up <laughs> the way she thinks about people, and uh, she definitely has no qualms in acknowledging that people do stupid. People are stupid compared to her, which is I thought was pretty interesting. I was like, I mean, sure. I mean, I can I can see where one can arrive at that conclusion. But to hear a psychopath talk about it, you know, it's it's really something special happening there. So yeah, I think that's it. I'll I'll uh, I'll try to get the name for the of the YouTube channel for you. That works. That's good. Let's see. Let's see if that slides into this. Ooh, look. If I work harder, work smarter. Let's go with that, right? Uh, hmm, interesting. Okay, yeah, so. Just want to kind of get it to fold under itself, and then you can probably slide it in. You know, I was thinking about the idea of uh, yeah, the way American business works, or just maybe business in the West, or just business in general. You know, there's a certain degree of like disregard for other people's quality of life that uh, businesses just in general have. So for instance, like they try to pay you the least amount of money just to get you to at least show up regularly. And then just enough to keep you around, right? And at the same time, don't really invest too much in you, you know? It's like, uh, it's like one of those things. It's like capitalism at its finest. <laughs> you can almost like, uh, you can sniff it out if you know what it looks like. You're like, oh yeah, they <laughs> pay you the least amount, get you to do as much as they can. So basically they squeeze you, you know? They, it's, it's like, uh, it's like they squeeze you so much to get all as much productivity out of you as they possibly can. And that there is what people consider good capitalism. It's what managers get praised for, you know. Productivity went up. Yeah, but people's quality of life is going down. Doesn't matter. You just want to keep on flirting with the uh, limitations of what's possible. And that seems to me, like, you know, <laughs> like a psychopath psychopathological kind of approach to uh, constructing a successful business and yet here we are and that is what is coveted that is what people think is good sound business you know to treat your employees employees like that kind of crazy if you ask me well either way uh, there's a thing phenomena that's an acknowledge that uh, psychopaths tend, tend to be uh, very common in, in upper management. I can tell you first from first-hand experience, that is a fact. It's one of the main reasons why I can't seem to go to work for other people without getting fired all the time. Because I'm like, go to hell. What the hell are you talking about? Not only are you a psychopath, but you're also stupid. You know, that kind of thing. That's that's who I am. So, not easy for me. And many of you are experiencing the same kind of, like, you know, behavior. As in, uh, you're struggling with the same problems that I am there. You know. But you're not alone. That's all I gotta tell you. You're not alone. 
So let's say this just needed a little bit of elbow grease. So that's what we got. Really squeezed it in a lot on the, on the vise. So it just kind of slides right in like that. See? Black on black, my favorite color. Well, not really. Probably black on the light. Oh, let's see. Alright, so that right there is going to be probably the most important part of our problem to solve. Now, I would say some silicone spray would be useful right now to help uh, slide this in, but whatever. Let's go. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's like. It's like not coming out anytime soon. All right? Okay. So here's the plan. Right? All right. This in itself right here would probably just stay, you know. But we're not gonna do like a haphazard experiment. We're gonna do it right. We're gonna do it right because we do it once, not twice. Um, so. These are two different types of push pins. We can see. I got two different sizes because I didn't know which one would work best. That nipple is important because it needs to stick out through this and hit that, right? So I think this larger one is the way to go. Right, so it's going to go inside of this here like that. See? All right, let's give you the part number. So part number. It's going to be uh, the manufacturer, not a, not a sponsor, is Valco, V-A-L-C-O. And part number is B-134. Hey there, American, Cleveland, Ohio. This is the larger one. That's what I think we're going to use. Uh, same manufacturer, Valco, part number B. B-130. So this is B-130 and this is uh, B-134. So we're going to use these. And we're ch I've chosen this one just because that nipple protrudes a lot more and I think that's going to be give us a better a better grip. So it's super important when you use a rivet uh, to get the tightest fit possible, right? So you just want to like find the diameter that is closest to fit in. So looks like that one's going to be the one. So that fits really nicely on the rivet there. So. And that is what size? Hmm. Oh boy, my eyes are terrible. Terrible. Five thirty seconds. Okay, so we use a five thirty second drill bit. So let's talk about what's happening and why I do what why I did what I did. So you'll see that when we look at the uh, hula hoop, right? You notice that we have the curvy part here. It looks like it's going to be facing the outside, which is great because we want to drill the rivet down into the material here. We don't want it to be like through that part because it's pointless. It'll crack, you know? So make sure you like get this lined up facing out or inside towards you. All right. So the reason why we drill the drill this hole here it's because oh, that's excellent just uh, probably should just get a regular drill bit or a proper tightener for it try this again okay so we just want to drill a hole through here and uh, it's gonna, this is going to help keep Keep the two 
pieces together. So this is these are called mantrals. So you want to put the right mantrel into the uh, head. Just they just unscrew, unscrew in, but it has to fit that. Oops. So put the right mantrel in. Right. Take that. Push that down into there. Right. And just keep keep squeezing to hear a snap. And there you go. So now these two are clamped together. All right, so this is not going anywhere. You can use this same technique if you want to make, um, you know, just a non-collapsible hose. You just put the other side in, drill a hole and put a, um, you know, rivet into it. So that's another option you have. So next we're going to figure out which one of those will work for the diameter of this. So put that in. Nope, not going to work. And that one works, right? So this is the one we're going to use. And that is quarter inch. So that's going to be a quarter inch. Let's try to see how successful we're going to be at fighting with this for a second here. Okay, not too bad. So there you go, not too bad. I can tell you right now, this is gonna turn out pretty well. See a little gap there? If you're being really anal and you wanna get rid of that, you're gonna have to really, really, really like get a nice clean cut. Okay, so I wanna get as much of it out of it, out of it as possible, so. That's what we're going to work with, right? Okay. So, let's see. What can we do? Alright, that's all we're getting. Okay, so. This is a big and important decision here. Because, uh... That, well, you know. This is not a... It's not being undone. This hole. Okay, ready? Here we go. Does that make sense? We have material here? Yeah, we do. We're good. Okay. That's it. Pull it out, right? See our hole here? So we should be able to just go like this. Take this here. Ooh, is that gonna work? Yeah. Come on, get in there. Let's see. I don't know. Probably should have picked a, picked a little smaller. Will that work? Mmm. Love. I love proof of concept designs. <laughs> oh man. No one's gonna fight me a bit. Oh yeah, that one's fighting me. Hmm. I'm gonna think about this for a second. Alright, so I looked at this some more, right? And I said, well, maybe if I flipped it this way. You know, I can see that it's that it wants to work. Like it actually will expand. You know. So I was like, let's try this again. I think I got to recruit some other tools. You know. I think it's one of those things where you just have the wrong tool for the job. And by the right tool, I mean some needle nose pliers. Yeah. Make sure that's lined up. I'm going in without lube. You know, that's not a common practice around here, let alone advisable. Lube is good, that's what I'm saying. 
silicone spray is what I would recommend. So you see how that sits in there? Right? It's not really much you can, gra can grab with that, but I look, look at this. I think I, I think I got it. It's kind of like it needs to. There's a little persuasion, I think, just to kind of get itself through that hole. I think that's, that's all it is. Seems a little persuasion. Well, there you go. Look at that. See, so now, right, what we have is proper, proper expansion of the nipple. Can you see that? Yeah, there you go. So that should now function like this. Make you push that down to get the hoop out. See how that and just yeah, so should it go like this now famous last words let's see hmm interesting so I'm that make this wider Kind of collapsible hoop to fight with, but yeah, that should work. Probably need to break it in a little bit, huh? What are you thinking? Like a couple tries, several tries, and then. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Well, that's a doozy. Persuasion. I think, I think so. Oh, there you go. It's trying to push itself back through the hole. Hmm. There you go. Now, you're not supposed to fight with your collapsible hoop like this, but this is a proof of concept. So that does work. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, that's holding all right. All right, well, there you go. That's your collapsible hoop. So to get it uncollapsed, you just wanna, uh, probably, probably not much holding this in place right now, but you just kinda like wanna push it down some. Ta-da! <laughs> It's not the smoothest, but you get the point. <sighs> I think over time that'll actually work itself out. Yeah, that's pretty much the uh, <laughs> words you don't want to hear from an engineer. All right, well there you go, folks. I think that's a uh, that's a good proof of concept for uh, a collapsible hoop. Uh, I think the. The hoop itself will maybe maybe like a maybe a wider hole might be better. I don't know. Maybe the smaller one would also be better. Hmm. All right. So here's the smaller one, right? It's uh, it's gonna be a little bit. Just the diameter works out pretty well too. Just so you know for that. So. My issue is retrieving it when I'm done, because uh, once the thing goes in there, 
is going to be a bit of a fight to kind of get out. There we go. Come on. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Well, that's good already. That's pretty good. That's a happy one. See? See that protrudes already? Let's see what we can get here. Let's see how that goes with this. Okay, come on. Whew. Just that in itself is enough to keep the hoop in place. Jesus. Over time, it'll get easier. <laughs> okay. So. <sighs> Come on. <sighs> Almost there. <sighs> so close. I think it just really, this whole it's, whoa, <laughs> I like push that down a lot. That's pretty interesting. What happened there? So this is a 17 60 fourths. It went up one more. I just wanna see. things. So here's the larger. Yep. There you go. See how that just kind of like springs. Wow, interesting. So. Okay. Let's open up both of those holes. Do the same for this. Okay. So now, again, this is the larger one. You can see how much more that sticks out. That's good because you want that really grab the hula hoop. Now the problem is it's gonna right grab it. On the first hole it encounters right here. Let's see if we can get past it. Ah. Hmm. Come on. That's what I call it a proof of concept. <laughs> see, it's trying to expand on out. Yeah. Ah. Oh yeah, it's totally, totally trying to. Expand. <sighs> hmm. Well, I guess. Just a fighter. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we know that works. Hmm. The answer might be to have less material. Yeah, let's try it. So I thought about this for a little bit. Okay, so if I slide this in, right, it will expand as designed. My issue is, right, as soon as I put the other hose on to the other side of this, it squeezes this so tightly, right, that this gets bounded up. So we have this riveted in already. Is, uh, we could just drill it out, right? But we don't need to do that. We're gonna we're gonna hack it. So what I propose is that we slice this down some, or remove this extra material, just to give this more space to collapse. You know what I mean? Ideally, I would just drill this out and get a new piece. If this if that doesn't work, then we'll just 
do that and start over with another piece like this. It's not gonna work. Alright, something like that. That just gives it more material to, to squeeze around. I mean, less material to squeeze around. I think that should We did it. Finally got it. Secret. Now oh, look at this. So that, that operates so smoothly now. Right? That's because there's just too much material in here. So when I pushed this in, it was a squeeze and everything really tight. We know that that hole needed to be a little widened just to decrease the friction. Right? So look. So easy that slides on now. You can push that down, and then that goes past there. And then that just lines up with that. And there's your collapsible hoop. Bam. Like a boss. Yeah, we did it. Well, that was a lot of fun. So then you just press that down it out like that you know and then you want to kind of like finish it off with a little bit of sandpaper get rid of the uh, little shards here but anyway you can add this trick to your uh, I'm a stupid dad toolbox you know like, does your dad make hula hoops <laughs> my dad makes hula hoops I really wish I had some kids all right, I'm feeling, ladies, I'm feeling. Let me know if you want to have some kids with me. We can have lots of fun kids doing stuff, playing around, building things. Boy. That is shameless marketing for myself there. Single guy making hoops. Well, either way, you get the point. It works well. I'm happy. You're happy. Everybody's happy. We did a good job. Hey, if you like this video, I want you to go ahead and uh, you know, subscribe. Let the world know. And also share it with your friends to help the world know. And uh, either way, I really wanted wanted to do this for a while. Make this video because I, I thought about it. I was like, yeah, I don't really need, think you need to buy too much extra hardware. And there you go. So that's all you need. Anyway, thanks for uh, hanging out. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. And uh, definitely feel free to uh, ask some questions and see. Let me know what share your little adventures with hula hoop making. So cool. All right, thanks again. I'll see you later.